Take my friend. No astronaut would enter the capsule carrying his air conditioner. Remove his helmet. James Bond, allow me to introduce myself. I am Ernst Stavro Blofeld. They told me you were assassinated in Hong Kong. Yes, this is my second life. You only live twice, Mr. Bond. I think it was in um, the spring of 2013, and I got a message on Facebook from Stevie Nesky from Radio Sun. I had no idea who they were. Um, they were from Australia, and uh, they expressed, or Steve expressed their interest in uh, having me um, mix their record. So I thought, well, I can't really jump in and just agree to mix the whole record I thought you know I'll mix a track and if they like it um, then you know I'll mix another <laughs> sent the first mix off and, and that was it. I got home and uh, the mix had a positive rev review from them and and uh, and that's it. I started started working on the record in earnest after that. Okay, October 2014, Chicago, MRF 4, Paul Lane. It's still hard to look back you know, the events that unfolded that night and just how quickly a good time just turned bad so suddenly
Steve started talking to me about that there was enough of a fan base for me to come over uh, to Australia and do a few shows, and I was uh, very surprised by this. And um, after the course of working on the album, you know, and I'm hearing how great these guys were, how what great players they were, um, and when Steve suggested um, that I come over and do a couple shows with them, um, and that they would learn the material, I thought, why, why not? Why, why would I say no to that? Um, I always wanted to go to Australia, and I was um, building a friendship with the guys in Radio Sun, and what better way as musicians than to cement a friendship than by playing together. Danger tunes and Paul Lane tunes was a bunch of fun for all of us, uh, particularly from a guitar player's point of view. Just just good songs, so so many good tunes. So we were really buzzed to be be part of this, and uh, you know playing the the Australian shows that we did together, and also the uh, appearance at Melodic Rock Fest was just just a huge buzz for all of us. So. <laughs> And I can still recall buying the first round of drinks uh, right before tearing it up on stage. You know, with Paul, we wrapped up a killer set, and um, in the confusion that followed, it's still like a blur. Um. Uh, we got to play a show together in Chicago, which was, uh, you know, they came over here on home turf. And uh, that was a wonderful experience as well. I still remember just looking around at Jace, singer Jason and just thinking, oh, my gosh, this guy's voice is so, so good. And, uh, you know, having a smirk on my face and just, just you know, gives you shivers down your spine, you know. So we were really, really, you know, buzzed to be learning these songs and playing these tunes and, uh you know, I think for the other guys in particular, that it was um, quite a task because Paul uh, knows his stuff. <laughs> you know, one minute we're having a great time, and uh, in a split second, Paul was gone, just vanished. It was his shout. I was lucky enough uh, working on the Radio Sun record that they actually allowed me to do some arrangement things as well. Um, you know, it's a funny role as a producer, especially producer after the fact. And I'm really not not so much a producer on this album as I as I just was a mix guy. But um, 
they allowed me to throw in, you know, the odd uh, keyboard part and background vocal part and make some suggestions with some arrangements. And um, that's kind of the perfect situation for a guy like me. I mean, where I come from, getting into a shout is a big commitment. I mean, can you name me a bigger one? Marriage. The Kiss Army. <laughs> now we're talking serious stuff here. You know, beer, bourbon. In Paul's case, you know, like a pina colada with uh, those little umbrellas in there and kind of two straws. Obviously, I come from the songwriter place, so if I feel that there's uh, something to make it better, um, I'm just itching to add that part. And so, you know, I asked with all due respect if I could, you know, make some changes here and there. And, you know, really, I, I, they give me more credit than uh, I'm due because um, the writing was phenomenal. And uh, any parts that I added, I mean, it's just really um, a small thing on my part. Um, I think any good writer slash producer slash mix engineer would have would have offered up you know similar suggestions um, on some of the tracks still affect me. Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm a social wreck. <sighs> I might drink alone, you know. And my friends ask me, hey Robbie, are you in for this round? And I just, just freeze. Just freeze. Oh, I can't go through that again. I just can't do it. So yeah, it's just funny, you know, the Radio Sun and me got together through the magic of Facebook and technology. And it's interesting to me too that, uh, you know, a band would uh, put their work in the hands of someone who lives on the other side of the world. Normally in studio situations when you're mixing a record, the band's in there making suggestions right on the fly as you're mixing. Um, and through the magic of Skype... <laughs> Uh, we were able to get it done, and uh, I realized, hey, this is uh, this is something I can do more, more of, and um, and have that communication, and it really does work. I don't think I did a refill anyway, guys. Guys, <laughs> not again, not again. Not again. Cut. Cut the camera.